Thanks for joining the Focus Hunting Podcast for us. Hunting in the outdoors isn't just a hobby, it's a lifestyle. Join us as we cover all things hunting, fishing, and the outdoors in Western Canada. Sound is all going to stop. So <clears throat> that's that's getting pretty far into the calling of it. Yeah, um, for sure. Um, is, but there, that just, is there I, any tube that you would suggest a beginner start with? Um, not really. I would just say if you have a tube at home or your dad has a tube or your brother or someone in your family has one, just grab it and start playing with it. One um, thing I wanted to add was that this little, I always struggled with the traditional tube style. Yeah. Now this little cup piece. Now my screen is, is, uh, here, I'm going to switch the screen around here so the people listening can see it. So this little piece that you add to the end of your bugle tubes yep. made all the difference in the world in my ability and sound with this tube i don't mm -hmm. sound nearly as good well i would like to think i don't sound nearly as good <laughs> with the other one i mean i'm not saying i sound good with you know either way but i'm saying yeah. with this little with this little piece that you put on end this little rubber piece it it yeah. sure definitely helped me uh with my bugle tube and you know like i said i am you know far from experienced when it comes to elk calling so yeah uh, well well part of that if you take that end cap off that hole's a lot smaller because now you're just dealing with the plastic um this i have mine glued on pretty good so i don't pull it off um but the hole is a lot smaller rather than calling on the on the end of here and that's kind of why i flared it you know i i kind of did it for like creature comfort as well uh but it does make a difference when you're when you're calling gotcha for sure okay let's talk a little bit about using the reed and then applying the bugle tube to it at the same time so like kind of like what it should sound like like make the sound you're making and then what it sounds like when you're applying the bugle tube sure okay so and believe it or not when you're doing um uh, cow sounds as well a lot of times i don't do everyone through it but i do I do cow call through my tube as well. So if you're just going to do a basic cow. It does change it. It gives it a little more tonal quality. Mm -hmm. um, so I do use it for some of my cow calls. Obviously not all of them. But where it really starts to shine is when you start doing your moans and groans and chuckles, and then obviously right into your all, all out bugles, uh, your location bugle, advertising bugle, you know, all those ones, they all have special names to them, but you pretty much have to have uh, a bugle tube to do the sounds properly. I mean, you can just do a bugle with your reed, but it's not going to sound the same, you know? Yeah, so for sure. Um, so are, are you, nothing's changing though in that sequence so people when people are making the sound they're making the exact same sound but they're now they're just applying it to their lips they're not yep. jamming it on their face so it's like really hard and tight they're just gently pressing yep. against the lips right yeah just basically i'm not pressing my lips into it they're just mm -hmm. up against it And basically what a lot of people are going to find, and me as well, I find I actually call better with a tube than without a tube. I don't know if it's a mental thing or if it's just you're taking your focus off making the sound because you're do doing it into a tube now. It almost like it tricks your brain a little bit and you don't think about, okay, I don't want to mess this sound up. As soon as you put a tube to it, it's kind of automatic. You just do the sound into it automatically, right? So, right. I guess mentally too, when you, the thing is <clears throat> with like, not necessarily with the cow and calf calls, but especially with the, you know, the, the bull calls, which we'll get into in a little bit, those really, that's where you really notice it because when you're using a read, you know, you might be doing, you, you might start off doing it and you're like, well, this sounds nothing like it. But then as soon as you apply the bugle tube to it, you're going to be like, well, okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now I can actually yeah. hear those sounds and like what I was practicing, but in order to get that before you even put a bugle tube to your face, you have to 
you know, work those muscles, get, you know, get comfortable with that reed in your mouth. So it doesn't feel like you're going to choke on it. Cause like for the first time you put it in your mouth, you feel that latex on, yeah. on the roof of your mouth and on your tongue. It's kind of like a, a, a bland taste where you're like your natural, your body's natural reaction is to mm -hmm. spit it out. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, so make sure you get those process, go through the first processes and then, but yeah, once you start adding a bugle tube, it is definitely good because then you can start, you know, understanding what you've been practicing before you start to make, you know, you start to you um, hear the sounds that you've been making and they sound more like you're, you know, imitating the out, the out calls. Exactly. Yeah. And one thing I want to point out, people are going to start out with a count calf read, like we talked about, and then they're going to advance to like a bugling read. So well, this one's that the one there, the, the chaos. The, yeah. This one's called the chaos. Yeah. <clears throat> so the difference between them, they both look the same. If I hold the reeds up, the reeds both look the same, but they're totally different. The latex that they're made with, this one's really thin latex. Remember, it's for cow-calf sounds, so you're going to get higher pitches right away. This one's a 04 latex, so this is basically a middle-of-the-road latex that you're going to pick up at any store. It's a 04 and a lot of the stores, if you read the reads, they'll say like a medium bowl or um, just a bowl call, stuff like that. The reason they're saying that is because once you start going to a thicker latex, so this one here is a 0.25 latex, this one's a 04, so almost double the thickness. So if you try doing a cow call on this one, it's a lot harder because it's made to bugle. So a mm -hmm. cow call. You can hear it's twangy because yeah. it's made, it, you know, it's made for that higher pitch. You know, it wants to go to a high note and scream versus doing a cow call. They're really good once you wear them out. So once you wear them out, don't throw them away because they become a really good cow call. But up until that point, you know, it's basically made for bugling, location bugles, um, advertising bugles, chuckles, moans and groans, grunts, that kind of stuff, uh, barks. That's so. really important for sure, because I think for guys who've never called or who can't, who really struggle making sounds with those calls, if you're yeah. using a call that's that you shouldn't, you know, that this latex is too stiff, it's going to be really hard. And I find that still when, if I'm using a, a really like a brand new call, I put it in my mouth, man, like you have to really push on that to wear that, that uh, latex. In. And like I said, I'm not a great caller. I, you know, I, I don't call a lot when I'm elk hunting. Yeah. But like, I like, like you said, when my call gets broken in, um, that I really like it then. Right. Cause then it's soft. I can make cow calls. I yeah. use it. For, uh, no, I just, I'm kind of like a, a one and done. I have one of your calls and I, I don't remember which one it is, but I have one of them and that's it. And I have like 12 of those things. And then when it rips or breaks or I lose it, then I grab a new one. But the new one, as yeah. soon as you put a new one in your mouth, man, yeah, you got to mm -hmm. really work and break those things in for sure. You got to break them in and you got to get used to, used to that different tension again, cause you're going to put different air across it. Right. Yeah. For sure. So, going one more step higher so this is a 04 latex and this is my reaper this is the one that i use mostly when i'm out hunting bugling doing all the you know all my favorite bugles and stuff i use this one at worlds as well it's a 05 latex so this one's 04 this one's 05 so it's thicker yet again so mm -hmm. now now sorry Trev, i noticed you had a little that there's a, a bull and a cow up on there Mm -hmm. so yeah. that thicker latex is it still it's it's still good to use for cow calls yeah yeah once you once you break it in quite a bit mm -hmm. then you oh, gotcha. can still cow call on it as well just like what you were saying with your favorite read so yeah. <laughs> So it does take a little bit to break it in because it is a thicker latex. <clears throat> but believe it or not, I got guys that phone me and they want to buy the Reaper just for their cow call. And I'm like, okay. well, guys, you know, it's a thick latex. It's made to bugle. But some guys press on them really hard and they press, mm -hmm. you know, they're pressing up in the roof really hard and they blow harder. So that's kind of what they want. You, 
a lot of these guys are used to back in the day there used to be triple and and double reads a lot of these guys are used to double and triple reads yeah so that that's why they go to that one i have a now, question for you uh travis so um w- do you have different sizes for different pallets or different frames or how do you accommodate say someone that has like a really high pallet because i know for myself uh starting out calling that was kind of a crap shoot i had to go through a zillion different types of calls and frames and how how would you kind of steer somebody towards one reader if they have like a narrow pallet tall pallet or wide shallow yeah. how would you how would you uh uh steer them with your different calls okay yeah so i'm just gonna grab one over here so in my normal lineup it's my frame size is a normal just a normal size frame it's just a regular Mm -hmm. regular one they call it small but it's actually a regular um then i got in in part of my lineup i have a narrower frame so it's smaller like the distance between here and here Mm -hmm. here and here is a lot Mm -hmm. lot narrower so it's actually made for younger people uh females and then men with the higher palette like what you're saying Mm -hmm. so and most call manufacturers will have their regular frame and then a narrow frame and some have if you do phelps they do uh a medium frame i think his amp frame is probably a medium frame Mm -hmm. uh through phelps and i'm actually in the process of building a medium frame right now as well um so i'll have that out hopefully for hunting season this year uh, but right now I just have the narrow frame and then my regular frame, and then I'm going to be adding the medium to it. So it'll be between the medium frame is going to be between my, the narrow frame and the wide frame, mm-hmm. and it should fit, you know, most everybody from there on. Perfect. And how do you, and how do you tell, like, say if you're, you're trying to, you're teaching a beginner, how do you tell if the read is fitting you right? So if you're at a store and Take your read. Basically, if you put your thumb kind of, if you take your thumb and you put your thumb up to it like like this here, mm-hmm. and you kind of measure, if you kind of measure the, the width, basically, mm-hmm. with your thumb, you're not measuring the whole width of the read, like from the edge here to here. You just want to know this part here to here. So what you're feeling for is the actual frame that's inside there. Cause there'll be aluminum frame in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder if I have one not built. Just like, give me one sec here. Okay. So here's a frame. That's what the frame looks like. Okay. So what you're measuring for is this outside edge here to here. Mm-hmm. And you're trying to, you're basically using your thumb to do that. And if you, of course you're going to have tape on it. So you got to take that into it a little bit, but if your thumb fits pretty even with that, that's the size frame you're going to be. If all of a sudden you put your thumb up to say, here, I'm going to pull this one apart. Yeah. Because I know for me, uh, starting out, if I didn't have the right read size, I just yeah. I put one on and then I could almost make every noise right out of the gate versus others. You get a lot of air getting past and it gets harder. It feels yeah. you're like really laboring for even cow calls. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you can see this one here. Obviously my thumb is way, way bigger than what this one is. Mm-hmm. So this would like, if I throw this one in my mouth, it gets lost up in my palate. Cause I have a really, not high pallet, but it's flat and wide. So that's why when I throw this one in, you know, this one fits my thumb pretty good to where the frame would be. Awesome. So, so that's kind of one quick thing you can do at the store. Just put your thumb up to it and, and have a quick look. And what I do is, you know, press on the tape so that you can definitely see where the frame is. That's how wide it's going to be. So perfect. So yeah. that's kind of just a quick little gauge. I mean, everybody's thumb is a little bit different size. But once you do it a couple of times, you're going to see exactly what I mean. And you're going to be like, okay. And then from there, while you're at home, take your thumb. So you know how big your thumb is. Put it up in your palate. Like that. Like literally touch the roof of your mouth. And then go side to side. 
So. And what you want, like on me, I have about an eighth of an inch on each side when I go back and forth. My thumb isn't touching my upper molars instantly. I have to go back and forth a little bit. So that's going to give you a really good idea. You know, as soon as you go to the store now and put your thumb up to it and go, okay, well, dang, that's going to be pretty close. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it'll save you 15 bucks, you know, buying one just to go, huh, get it home and go, man, that thing doesn't even fit. Yeah. What a waste of money, right? Mm -hmm. 